Hi everybody. So my name's Lisa. In case you've never watched one of my videos or been to my um, channel before, um, I just wanted to come on and just kind of share really quick. Just I guess like reintroduce myself to those of you that do know me as well, um, because I have been being pushed to kind of start opening up in a different way, not kind of, but to start opening up in a different way. And um, it's a lot more personal, but it also um, resonates very deeply with what I feel my purpose is. Um, you know, I started this channel like to find other people that were going through this whole like waking up process as well and just to like share my experience and as I've grown I've like shared more of my my gifts and you know done the readings and and um it's been amazing and I'm still going to do that because I I love doing it I I know for me my personal journey the cards have just um really helped me to get um to look introspectively you know and um and heal you know so um and it's like confirmation from spirit that i'm either like doing the right right thing or i need to like tighten up so that it doesn't go down a certain way you know and um so i will keep doing that but um the other thing that i've always had in my heart is um like even before i ever started waking up or um how to youtube channel or like is um i i, I want to just like be this this voice like i know that i've shared in a, in a few of my readings and i i get kind of personal because i don't i don't want to hide any any piece of me i'm not ashamed of any part of um my history you know and it's all brought me to this point, you know, where I can sit here and confidently speak my speak, speak my truth, you know, and tell you my story. But, um, you know, I come from a background of extreme trauma, which, you know, a lot of people do. And um, I know that for me, Coming from that that place of trauma, I mean, and I'm talking like sexual abuse. I'm talking rape. I'm talking gang rape. I'm, talk, I'm talking physical abuse. I'm talking emotional abuse. I'm talking <laughs> verbal abuse, like all of it, okay? And um, just years and years and years and years of it, and relationship after relationship after relationship, and um, just repeated, you know. And then, um, you know, so in turn, like I also abuse myself, you know, because I was uh, very addicted to drugs for a really long time. I started drinking when I was 12. I was a full-blown alcoholic by the time I was 14. And, you know, I did everything, you know, I, I didn't deny myself anything. Um, the, the one thing that I didn't ever do was um, inject heroin. But, um, you know, I, I snorted it, you know, and so, so I've like, I'm just telling you this, like, so you can see that um, I've I was a basket case. Okay, I've been a basket case, and um, so in getting sober, that was. But like, even in all that mist, like of chaos that was going on, like I I just always had this underlying feeling of like this couldn't be all there was, you know, like I just always had this, um, I don't know, this like hope inside, you know, um, I know that I, I was, uh, I don't know. Okay. That's a different, I'm just going to, so I get sober. I've gone through like all these different, um, methods. It's not like this, this last time that I got sober, like I had tried to get sober many times before and, you know, it just wasn't ever anything that, um, was real. I started being institutionalized at the age of 14. I spent, um, most of my life in there because I would, they used to make me wear um, pajamas and, and socks because I was an escape artist, you know, and, um, 
I used to run away. I used to just like leave stuff in the doors and so that I could like sneak back out and like open the doors. And, you know, I was just very sneaky and um, creative. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I spent a lot of time in those institutions, you know, from 14 to 18. And at the time that I was going, they weren't like drug rehabs. They were just like, all of them were like mental institutions for kids. And, um, but I would spend like, you know, four months to six months to nine months at a time, you know, in, in these, and then I would get out and instantly run away and, you know, go use again. And it was just this vicious cycle in my life until like my parents just like, they, they didn't want to deal with it anymore. And, um, you know, so I, um, but what I'm trying to say is that I have like just gone through so much in my life and, um, getting sober for me, was like the first step to like clear out the fog to even start to believe. And, you know, God put this woman in my life, um, that just, showed me a different way. You know, she, she, I remember she was the first person. Cause when I got sober, like, you know, you go to these like 12 step programs and everybody hugs each other. And like, I am just not into that. Right. So, um, and when I first got sober, like I was really not into it. Like people would try to hug me and I'd be like, uh, no, you know, like hold up, you know? And it took me a really long time to allow somebody to hold, to, to hug me. And, um, I remember her just telling me that, are, are you willing to just like forget everything that you know up until this point? And I, I was just like, okay. She's like, can you start with a blank slate? And, um, I don't know why, but I was just like, okay. You know, like I literally felt like I had tried everything, you know, and nothing worked. And, um, I did everything she said, you know, like everything, everything she told me to do, I did. And, um, like she would tell me to call her every day and I did, but she would never answer the phone, you know, but I'd see her every day at the, these meetings and, and, um, I'd be like, I called you and she's like, okay, babe, great. You know, um, call me tomorrow. And I was, I, I like totally didn't get it, but she was the, I was very connected to her instantly. She just like described her, um, experience. And it just like hit me right in the heart. Like I knew that if she could stay sober, like she was, she, she, she was the only one that I could believe that could carry me out of that or show me the way how, cause she never carried me. The one thing that I love so much about her is that she taught me to do for myself. And that's, that's the part that I want to really get out there is to help other people understand, like, all you need is you, you know, and yeah, you know, maybe you need like one, one, one cheerleader, like I had, I had her, you know, one really good cheerleader that, that teaches you that everything you need is already inside of you. Okay. And isn't trying to teach you, uh, you know, to feed their own ego, you know, and, uh, because I was always like, really like, I'm, I'm, a am a, like a standalone kind of person. Um, my, I was like raised in an environment where like, you don't let people see you sweat. Like people will kick you when you're down like, like that. Okay. And, um, so I was extremely guarded and, um, through this whole like process, you know, and the little steps that I've taken gradual steps. Cause you know, I got sober, uh, 2001. So it's like, it's been over, t over 17 years now, but, um, that I've been sober, but it's been like this baby step journey. I have made many, many ex mistakes. Most of these mistakes have been wide out in the open for everybody to see and to like laugh at me or mock me or, or whatever. Okay. 
and um, it's been humbling and humiliating at times. But I had this woman, okay, and her name was Maureen, and she's since passed away. But um, I had this woman that no matter what happened, she, she would just say things like, Lisa, you better start asking for the, the lesson because otherwise this shit's just going to keep on happening until you figure it out. And, um, you know, I, I learned to start doing things like that. And with different areas of my life, like it, I started to see changes, you know, and um, especially in, in regards to the way that I responded to my family and not, not necessarily the way they responded to me, but because like what I've also learned is that I don't have any control over anybody else, you know, and um, sometimes it takes me a little, a little bit to remember that, but you know, for the most part, like I just try to mind my own damn business and um, keep my side of the street clean and and do what I, what feels right for me in my heart, you know. But you know, it's been a process. It's been a journey to get get to the place where I'm at today, you know. And even still being here, like I still make some mistakes. And part of the reason why I feel so compelled to like share my story and and share my experience and put myself out there to hopefully like inspire. I don't know, maybe I won't inspire anybody, but um, I know that I'm doing this because it just feels like what I'm supposed to do. Like, seriously, like it just, I'm, I'm like about to start crying right now because it just means so much to me. And, um, but anyway, the, 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 the thing that has been the most difficult um, to move through is um, my relationship with men and my relationship within my family. Like these, these two things have been the last, the last things. Like it's like the, the bottom of the barrel garbage down there. Okay. And, you know, through the process, yeah, I've gotten more confidence. Yeah. I've like learned to be independent. Yeah. You know, like all this, all this stuff, you know, that I've walked through, you know, and, um, you know, going from being someone who, uh, never felt fit to be a mother because, you know, wh while I was drinking and stuff, you know, I used, um, well, you know, I had a son that I gave up for adoption that I regretted every day of my life. <sighs> Which, um, you know, when I gave him up, when I let, you know, I thought I was doing the best thing, um, I, I, I swore to him and to myself, like, I would never, well, first I swore to him I'd be a better woman by the time he met me. And I, like, just shut down emotionally at that point in my life. I was, like, 20. And, um, I was full blown drug addict, alcoholic, you know, I, I didn't use while I was pregnant with him. I stopped using and drinking the second that I found out I was pregnant with him. But, um, you know, that kind of lifestyle for me, from that, that point forward, you know, I used birth, I used, uh, abortion as a form of, a, of birth control and it's not anything that I'm proud of and it's something that still to this day you know um you know hurts and um so it's all this like there's all I'm hearing the song sexual healing it's all this like the, the sexual healing part for me has been um the deepest and the the toughest thing to face, you know, like my daddy issues and um, because this, all this sexual trauma and all this abuse, like it just like set me off for a life of destruction. And so now, you know, being sober, 
you know, I take responsibility for my life today. So it's like, I can't blame. I, I don't feel this anyway. Like I don't blame. It's nobody's fault. You know, it's nobody else's fault. Like I make my own choices, you know, and that's what the freedom of being sober has given to me is that freedom of choice, you know? And I'm not saying that you don't have a choice if you're like somebody that like drinks wine occasionally or whatever. I'm just saying what, what for me, what it's been about. And, um, but, uh, so it's this, this healing of all this sexual trauma, you know, including the, um, the abortions that I've had, you know, and, and the losses I have experienced, you know, since I, um, became like woke, I, I don't even like, like, you know, like I don't consider myself like anything. I'm just, I'm just me. I'm just Lisa. You know, I am, you know, just like you were. And, um, but this is my story, you know? And so I just feel compelled, like to share my journey, you know, to, Like as proof that <laughs> what's that song? The Amazing Grace. I'm hearing that song in my head because that's a rent. Like what is it? The wrench? Like me? Rich? Like me? Uh, I don't know. I'm just hearing that Amazing Grace song. But that's all I'm hearing. It's amazing. And I can't remember the words now because I'm talking to you. And um, because maybe throughout my sobriety, I still have struggled, you know. And by struggling, I mean, like, yes, I've had to rob Peter to pay Paul, you know. Um but I've always had a roof over my head and myself and my children, we've never gone hungry. Okay. I've always had a car. Um, well, once I had my kids, you know, I did used to take the bus and, um, and walk. And, you know, before I had my kids, uh, I did go without eating <laughs> in early in sobriety. And, um, those were things that I needed to do because I was, um, just a spoiled brat, you know, and, um, I don't know. Um, anyway, I don't want to make this like too long. I just, I just wanted to like, just, I, I feel like, I don't know where it's going to go from here, but I know that I'm supposed to talk about it. And if you want to talk about it with me, like, you know, leave a comment, like reach out to me, email, um, and, and let's get talking about it. I mean, it's why I feel that my readings like get so deep, you know, like it, especially if you've gotten a private reading with me, you, you understand like my, my readings are not, not like your average <laughs> reading. Like they go extremely emotionally deep, you know, and, um, it's a very emotional experience and I feel very honored, you know, to do a private reading for anyone, you know, because it, they get so personal and, um, but I've experienced a lot of, um, d different phases and aspects of like, you know, having to heal those parts of myself, you know? So it's like, it's like when, um, I don't know, you know, like I've always, even in, I've just always been surrounded by um, people that, um, like God's always put people in my life, like, cause as through these 12 step programs, like you become like, like, just like how I, I had Maureen, you know, then I become somebody, you know, I help somebody else. And it, I always get, the, the women that were like really broken, like me, you know, <laughs> and, um, and maybe not even as broken, but, or maybe sometimes worse, but it's like, there's a reason for that. And, um, 
you know, I'm not telling you that it's easy, you know, like, like I said, like I'm still going at it, you know, and, um, I feel like I've personally started my journey, like over 17 years ago, you know, about four years ago was when I became awakened to, um, just awaken, you know, um, to the deeper aspects, although I've always like known and sense, you know, cause we always kind of know, you know, but, um, well, at least I did. I'll keep it on me. I don't like telling people how they feel, but anyway, long story short, because now I feel like I'm rambling. I just want, um, you to know that I, I feel like this is where my next step is, is like towards this, um, sharing more personally about my, um, the healing that I have undergone and, the um, the things that have worked for me and the things that I do and the things that I've did and the things that I continue to do to, um, maintain my peace of mind, because that, that's really all it is. And to become like comfortable in my own skin, you know, and, um, that's, that's even, that's, it's all just a process, but, you know, I do feel that my, um, all the sexual trauma and all the abuse, like it had such a, an impact on the way that I carried myself into the world. And, and even up until this day, even presenting myself to the, to the world, like it's, it's all affected by, um, those things. And, it's the healing from it that has, um, also brought me here. You know what I mean? Like to, to be confident enough to like speak on, on, uh, on YouTube and not really care what, what anybody has to say about it, because it's like, I'm living out of this place. Like it brought me to a place where I know that the only thing that I need to do is to focus on me and listen to my heart. And then like in following that, it's just <sighs> amazing things have like opened up, you know, and it, I'm not going to even tell you that everything's gone perfectly because that would be a lie, you know, but, um, it's, it's also an amazing experience that I feel everyone should be courageous enough to start to start. We'll just leave it at that. And, um, so Anyway, I just want to say, like, you're not alone. Like, we're, I am a firm believer that we're all in this together. And um, I'm also a firm believer that we're all connected, you know. And the reason why, I'll, I'll just leave it at that because it's that's kind of sidetracked to what, to what I wanted this um, video to be about. But I just wanted to let you guys know, like, that's what's been on my mind. That's what's been on my heart. That's where I feel I'm being moved and guided to. It's like towards, you know, sharing more about the healing process, like of that sexual trauma of, you know, cause it's just like set me up for a life of codependency, blah, 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 you know, all the crap. And, um, the breakdown, because even though it's like, it goes deep and I think that I'm like, cool. And I get it. And I'm like, Oh, I'm going to, you know, never fall for that crap again. Like it happens again. And then that next time it goes even deeper. You know what I mean? The, um, so I want to be some, I, I want to be your cheerleader. Okay. Just <laughs> that's like, that's to show you that, that you can, you know, like, no matter what anybody else says, because it's not like, I mean, I had one cheerleader, you know, and, um, when I started and anyway, so well, I'll just leave it at that. And as I, we'll just see where this goes. And, uh, you know, feel free to comment or, you know, send me an email. I know some people are more comfortable just sending me an email. So that's fine. I love getting the emails. And um, some of you even reach out to me on Instagram and I love that too. And so anyway, just remember, like, I really love you and care about you. And um, 
I really am a believer that we are all in this together. Just as much as you guys tell me that I help you, like you, you have no idea. Like you help me so much. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. I love you. I'm sorry I talked so long, but I just wanted to just, that just needed to come out. So we'll see where we go. Right. <laughs> all right. Bye.